listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For today's episode, I had the opportunity to interview Sandy Jarvis. Sandy is a children's book author and poet who has written three books, King Maestro and Chuck, The Golden Kite, and From Dusk to Dawn. Sandy is currently working on another book, Dolly the Singing Train. Due to an audio echoing issue I had with the interview recording file, the interview has been reconstructed with my questions and comments being re-recorded and Sandy's original responses being from the original interview recording. I'm here with Sandy Jarvis, who is the author of The Golden Kite, King Maestro and Chuck, and From Dusk to Dawn. If I mispronounce the names of a couple of your books, I apologize, but Sandy, welcome to the Heartland Author Podcast. Thank you so much. Um, I'm happy to be here today. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. Um, Okay. Um, I was born and raised in New York City. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, In 1979, I was hired as a case manager specialist for Metropolitan Hospital. Um, Thereafter, I worked for DHS, that's Department of Homeless Services and HIV Care, for a total of 40 years. Uh, Two years before I retired, I was um, honored by the Commissioner Stephen Banks um, for outstanding services and helping the homeless secure affordable housing. Um, There's a misconception about the homeless population. Uh, It's not a one size fits all. At any time you can be faced with a crisis, medical issues, unemployment, and high rent are leaving people without a place to stay. And what happens a lot is that people wait until it's too late uh, to seek help. They're not aware of the resources or benefits in the community. Uh, For example, the Coalition for the Homeless, uh, they offer a one-time grant to pay your, you know, your rent. Catholic Charities provides uh, legal services, one-shot deal, and rent arrears. Uh, We have a program called the HASA, and the HASA program assists HIV applicants with necessary benefits like supported housing and rent arrears. But, you know, so often people end up in a shelter system because they don't know where to go for help. Now, without spoiling too much of each of your books, what are each of your books about? Well, um, the first book is uh, from Dustin Don. That was the first book that I published in 1998. That's a book of poetry. Um, that was the first novel that I published. And um, uh, The Golden Kite. Um, the Golden Kite is about competition and that cheating should not be an option to achieve your goals. Um, children are often motivated to win and they lose sight of making the right choices. And this is what happens with Benjamin the Rabbit. He is excited to compete in the art project at Greenwood, um, and he works very hard on his science project. But when he gets a look at Lenny uh, the rabbit, I mean, Lenny the bear, uh, he feels, um, he, you know, Benjamin feels he don't have a chance to win and that um, he has to eliminate Lenny from the contest. So eventually the golden kite is destroyed and now Benjamin, the rabbit, uh, he has to decide whether or not uh, if he's going to tell the truth or or, um, live with a lot. And that's what the golden kite is about. Was one of your books King Maestro and Chuck? Uh, King Maestro and Chuck. Maestro, excuse me. Right. Uh... King Maestro and Chuck, uh, that's, that's on the same line. It's in the same category. It's about tolerance, friendship, and trust. Uh, the difference is, is that the two characters, they constantly get into, you know, trouble. And um, uh, it's a dog and a bird. And the two characters, they battle crime in the Big Apple. And um, 
they leave Chip the bird. He's uh, he leaves Paradise Island and he stops at Flea Town to pick up Chuck. That's the dog. Um, and they head for New York uh, City. Um, and it's mostly a lot of um, challenges that they face. Uh, like they they um, the Siamese cats that are pinned together by their hips. Uh, that's the first encounter that they have um, when they um, come into New York City at Central Park. And then there's uh, Bullnose Jack. Uh, he's the outrageous dog catcher. And there's Pablo the, the squirrel. And Pablo the squirrel takes him on um, a tour of the New York City subway system. And you have one eye Pete in his game. You know, so it's, it's about... Uh, uh, friendship and trust, but it's a, uh, you know, it's it's challenges that they face um in New York City. Regarding the Golden Kite, how did you come up with the title of the book, and was ben the Benjamin the Rabbit character inspired by a real life person? <laughs> I laugh at that all the time. Um, I, you know, I was thinking about you know my own childhood. You know, I grew up in the 60s, and it was a time where, you know, you had to be creative. You didn't have all the tools that you have today. And, and um, you know, I thought about that time. Um, there's challenges that I face, you know, as a child. Um, and that's where I really came up, you know, you know, with the idea. Are all of your books self-published? Are all of your books traditionally published? Or are some self-published and others traditionally published? Uh, King Maestro... Uh, that's traditionally published, and um, The Golden Kite, that's self-published. Okay, now you have a book that is soon to be released called Dolly the Singing Train, is that correct? Uh, well, I'm working on that, you know? Okay, if you could give us a little bit of a preview of that book without spoiling too much of it, that would be great. And is The Singing Train's character loosely based on the music legend Dolly Parton? No, you know, um... You know, um, not really. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, when I was thinking about Dolly, I was thinking about a family member of mine. You know, so it's not connected with Dolly Parton. But, you know, what happened um, in this story, uh, Dolly is different. She's unique. And she's being bullied by three other characters, Hatfield, um, Big Will, Alberta, and um, Leopold, um, and Dolly gives up, you know, um, she's the fastest train in Ohio, and she gives up racing um, because uh, Alberta, Big Will Alberta, um, cheated in the contest. Um, so now um, she's constantly being laughed at, and uh, Dolly looks different than the other trains. Uh, the emotions are through her light bulb. It constantly changes colors. Like red is when she gets mad, and yellow is when she's happy. Um, so eventually, you know, Dolly, um, she just isolates herself. You know, she no longer wants to run until she meets uh, uh, a little boy named Billy Wright. And that's the only human character, you know, in the story. Now, when you were growing up, you had no siblings, and writing was a way for you to tell your story. Did being an avid writer at a young age help you when you started writing published works as an adult? Well, you know what happened? You know, you know, my mother would ask me something, and I was not very outspoken. Uh, I was shy, and she would say, okay, well, write it down. And I, and I would make a story out of it, and it helped me later on. Um, it'd be something simple and I'll just, you know, uh, make a entire story out of it. You know, if she asked me, well, um, did I do certain things around the house or did I, it could be anything simple, but, you know, I would just make a story out of it. Or like I said, I wrote poetry. And so that's how I started out, you know, writing. And my mother, she encouraged me to publish my, my poems. Now, in addition to your work as an author and poet, you worked for homeless services and HIV AIDS care in New York City for four decades. How did homeless services and HIV AIDS care evolve in New York City during that time? 
Um, could you explain that? How did homeless services and HIV AIDS care evolve in New York City from the time you started out and the time you retired? Well, it's totally different now. Um, you know, there were a lot of uh, services that I was able to utilize, um, you know, like the 8020 program, uh, supportive housing, um, HASA, they have their own um, housing like scatter sites, they have their own they have their own housing program, like scatter site housing, conjugate care, um, and you know we were able to link services with um, Volunteers of America and Housing Works, um, but but now it's totally you know different. Um, uh, the services are, are limited. I'm very sure they're very lim lim limited now that I left. Well, Sandy, you are a wonderful guest for this podcast, and I thank you for appearing on the Heartland Author Podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so happy, you know, to be here today, you know, to tell my story. <laughs> Before I sign off for this episode, I'm going to address the issue of having to reconstruct some of my interviews on here. In the past, Anytime I discover an audio echoing issue in the interview recorded during sections of the interview when I am speaking, I've simply left the echoing in most of the time. However, for this episode, the previous episode, and any future episodes where I discover an echoing issue when I am speaking during an interview, I'm going to re-record my questions and comments after the recording of the original interview and use the guest's responses from the original interview recording. The echoing issue is typically caused by the guest either not using headphones to listen to me or not having the audio output on the guest's end set up in the Windows, Mac OS, or other operating system settings so that the audio comes out of the guest speakers and not his or her headphones. When this occurs, there is no issue with me understanding a response from a guest, but when, when I am speaking to a guest... The guest microphone will pick up the audio of me talking from the guest speakers, which is what typically causes the echoing issue. And when this happens, I can hear my own voice echoing throughout the interview, but there isn't any issue whatsoever when my guest is speaking. For future guests, if you are using headphones and your computer is set up so that the audio output is through the headphones while they're plugged in or connected, there should be no echoing issue if everything is working correctly. This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at camparenapollo.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2023, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.